Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning. Morning. Lovely to, for us to be gathered here again, isn't it? We're a small, select group. <laughs> Somebody was uh, saying yesterday when we gathered for prayer, which I thought was amazing, was, look, Jesus could do wonders through 12 folk. Yeah. Do, mm. Through the 20-odd folk that we gather here uh, most Sundays. So let's be encouraged by that. Mm. It's quality, not quantity, as they say in business life. Um, welcome to Mo. Uh, we thank Mo, don't we, as well as the rest of the Grace Bunch, uh, for their faithful service and support of us over these months. Uh, Mo, it's great that you're willing to commit so much time to us, and we look forward to hearing what God's put on your heart. Today, you may have noticed that uh, in the notices that we're moving on to the book of Acts. We're uh, finishing uh, where we were in Luke. We'll come back there again, uh, but jumping to Luke's second book which is the, the book of Acts. It's a wonderful story. It's an exciting story of how God, through the Holy Spirit working in people's hearts, establishes and grows the church from those 12 uh, up to um, where we are today. <coughs> Notice this before we uh, continue with our service. Welcome, Mo. Uh, unfortunately for you, you've got me next week where I continue with the rest of uh, Acts chapter 1 and then after that it's Graham Albans again who you'll remember he was here a month or so ago um, and uh, he'll be jumping into Acts 2 as ever there'll be tea and coffee afterwards for you to chat and as ever I encourage you um, not just to talk about the weather and the aches and pains that are most recently um, coming on you whether um, metaphorical or physical but also to to ask each other how we're going spiritually and uh, perhaps reflect on what uh, God's going to bring us through more. Don't forget the prayer meeting on Wednesday the 24th. Mm. It's not in your diary, yeah. place it in there. It's a very important time for us, isn't it? Mm. Uh, to be praying as we uh, continue on our progress towards calling a new pastor. It's good to have Brian here with us, Brian DeFee, but he's in the prayer notes as well. Uh, embarrass him by mentioning it publicly uh, he's preaching in Northampton again on the 14th of April and as ever we continue to uh, hold up that ministry of Brian's uh, in prayer and give some thanks to the young people's work as well uh, our own uncover, uncover and they've been going to um, a great um, gathering called Vox um, Vox, who, those who know their Latin I think that's voice isn't it? I only know that because uh, marketing people talk about box pops, which is getting lots of little people to, to talk. And that means they've been gathering with a lot of other young people, young people leading young people uh, in the Bible and, and in worship. And it's been a great time from what I hear. Um, and the last session is on the 16th of April. And also for your prayers for young folk, uh, you know that we continue to pray for this place, for this building and the community that gathers here on a weekly basis and there is some hint coming out of Illuminate that there is one teacher uh, and at least one young person willing to uh, put their head above the parapet and see if the head teacher will allow some form of uh, Christian Union gathering uh, to happen again. That's just a hint. I don't, can't absolutely say that that's uh, the case. I've still to meet with the people um, that are looking to support that work, but do pray for it. Continue to pray for it. Wouldn't it be wonderful uh, to have a witness here uh, for young people and for staff uh, within this building? It's the end of the notices. We're going to run through, as we usually do these days, um, in a fairly um, uh, structured way without me popping up and popping down again. So anybody who's on the uh, order of service, just uh, keep an eye on it and come up at the right time. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are the God of the empty tomb. That you, the God of all creation, chose to accept the offering, the sacrifice uh, of your son on the cross. And it is through the cross and the empty tomb that we have the assurance that we can come into your throne this morning, come into your throne room and come to your throne this morning. We pray, Lord, 
that we will know in our hearts and our souls as well as in our heads that we are fully loved and accepted by you through your son and that we will know your presence this morning in a special way that in a way that veil which was ripped from top to bottom in the temple on the first Easter will be so clearly still writ as we come into your presence mm. that we would know the reality of you in our lives for today and for the week ahead and forevermore. Mm. Amen. Amen. Mm. <coughs> I was always come this morning and we can come to ask God with great confidence. We can know that He has planned for us. He's planned from the very beginning of the universe. We read in Hebrews, <coughs> in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in His last days, He's spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, and through whom He made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So let's come in faith and worship our Father God and our Savior Lord Jesus. Thank you. 
Father, we thank you and praise you because you are God and hear the prayers of your people. And we praise you, dear Lord, that you ever keep us in the palm of your hand. And you know individually, each one, you know all our trials and tribulations, our problems, our pains, our sufferings, whatever issues we have, you know about them. And Lord, we thank you that we can look forward to that eternal life with you. We look forward to, as it were, the golden gates opening up as we go towards them. And one day, dear Lord, when we die, we'll open our eyes. And what will we see? We'll see the Lord Jesus saying, come into my presence. Mm -hmm. Lord, how much do we look for that? In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Father, we've just uh, celebrated the risen Christ a week ago. And we thank you for that great expectation that we have that as he promised all those who believe in me shall not perish but have everlasting life Lord we thank you that that commenced the moment that we gave our lives to you we thank you that already we are enjoying a close fellowship with you and close fellowship with our other brothers and sisters who believe in you. We thank you that we don't have to wait, that now we are already walking with you. We're already communing with you. Through the Holy Spirit, we are encouraged by you, and you intercede for us. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your love to such broken sinners as we we thank you that as a close walk with you we will get, grow stronger and stronger in our faith stronger and stronger to witness for you in Jesus name Amen, Amen. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion. Let not your hands be weak. The Lord your God is in your midst. The Mighty One will say, He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. And he will rejoice over you with singing. Mm. Lord, what an amazing picture that is. That what you will do. And we look forward to those days, Father, in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you in the words of that last song. That living, you loved us. Yeah. Dying, you saved us. Buried, you carried our sins far away. Rising, you justified. Really forever. One day you're coming. Oh, glorious day. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for those mm. true words yeah. from that mm. old hymn. It's so 
true. We just thank you, Lord, for all the things that you went through for us in order to bring us that day to you and to bring you back that glorious day when we all see you, those that believe and those that don't. Everyone will have to stand before you one day, Lord. And we just thank you that you have saved us by what you did on the cross. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 <coughs> Let's continue to pray prayers of intercession. From Psalm 118, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his faithful love endures forever. Loving Father, we praise you with grateful hearts this morning, thankful for your grace. We thank you that you sent your son to show us the way to bring us to you to die in our place and to gift us with everlasting life. May we look upon your grace and rejoice in our salvation. Show us how to repent of the things that try to keep us from you. And we thank you, Father, that nothing can separate us from your love. May we be reminded daily to depend on you, to honour you and put you first. May our hearts, minds, words and actions all glorify you. Yeah. <coughs> we pray for our worldwide church, that your disciples in every nation walk closely with you and remain faithful, safe in the knowledge that you've told us not to be afraid, that you will never leave us. We pray for peace in the world. <coughs> this morning... We pray for the people of Israel and Gaza, for Ukraine, for Myanmar, and all the parts of the world where there is conflict. For the innocents, broken, scared, frightened, confused. We think of those who have lost their lives and those who grieve. For families shattered and children torn, to the injured, bring healing. To the bereaved, bring comfort. Mm. To the frightened, bring love. To the weary, bring hope. Yes. God of grace, <clears throat> we pray for an end to bloodshed. May peace come quickly. And we pray, Lord, that peacemakers may find a voice mm. and offer a way forward. Open up our hearts to the needs of others. May we reflect your love and compassion in all that we do, serving <coughs> those who are struggling in body, mind and spirit. And we pray particularly today for those in our fellowship, for our families, neighbours and friends who are struggling with illness, disability and sorrow or for those undergoing or awaiting medical tests or procedures. We name them in our hearts now. We ask for your comfort upon them. And we ask, Lord, that those known to us who do not know you, in our families, friends and communities, they be impacted by the way we lead our lives so that they are drawn to you. We continue to pray for the residents of the Shambrook Hotel as they seek a peaceful life here in the UK. We ask Lord for them to know your loving hand upon them. We pray for our dear brother Brian DeFee and his preaching ministry Lord. Pray for Judy as well, Lord. We thank you for our, our young people and children. Please bless them and keep them, dear Lord. For Uncover, the group have enjoyed being part of a larger group at Grace Church. 
and their, session, their last session is on the 16th of April. We pray, Lord, for their regular meetups after that here in Sharnbrook. And for our church, Lord, for the decisions to be made in the coming months as to what you want us to do. We pray for unity and love to continue between us. Thank you for our leadership team as they serve and seek to lead us through this. And we give you special thanks for the support from Grace Community Church. This morning we ask, Lord, please bless and speak through Mo as he brings your word to us, revealing your deep truths to our hearts. May your word be a light to our feet and a lamp to our path. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. professor at MIT, he entered some numbers in a com into a computer program which is designed to forecast weather patterns. He left his office to get a cup of coffee. 
And when he came back, he saw results that proved to transform the course of science. The computer model was based on 12 variables and includes stuff like temperature, wind speed, and so on. And on that day, Lorenz was repeating a simulation, an experiment he ran earlier in the day. But instead of entering 0.506127, I remember the number, <laughs> he ended up entering 0.506, leaving out the last three decimals. But being the good scientist that he is, he double-checked his work before running the program, he found a mistake, but instead of correcting it, he decided to let it run to see what difference it will make. He thought, you know what, such a small difference in one of 12 variables, there will be a minimal impact on the result, on the weather forecast that the program will produce. But to his surprise, the simulation was completely different. Over two months of weather forecast was completely different. That unexpected result led Lawrence to gain some really deep insight into the way the weather work. Small changes can have a massive impact. The idea came to be known later on as the butterfly effect, as Lawrence suggested that the flap of a butterfly wing on one side of the world mm. might lead to a hurricane on the other side. Do you ever find yourself in a way where you're wondering what impact are your words and actions are having on God's eternal plan? Mm. I mean, most of us, we try our best to be faithful in the way we live our lives. We try to walk in God's ways, to be loving and kind, and to point people to Jesus in whatever way possible. And sometimes we do it using what seems like very little words, and other times no words at all. But how do we know if those words and action are having any impact, especially when we can go through a long period of time where we don't see any tangible results. This morning we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 1 and instead of looking at the four, four verse, first four verses, I thought, you know what, that would be too much. Acts, sorry, it's chapter 1. We're going to look at the first two verses in Acts chapter 1 and we're going to learn five lessons from Luke about the way he engaged with people personally to try and help with those wandering thoughts that we have. The first thing that we're going to look at is the way he connected with people. <clears throat> a Romanian friend of mine, he was visiting the UK. He was visiting his in-laws in the UK. And while being outside, enjoying the garden on a nice summer day, he noticed the next door elderly gentleman trying to mow the lawn. He popped his head over the fence and he offered to help him. And even though the elderly gentleman, like any other British person, refused politely, he insisted, he went over, cut the lawn for him, and they ended up enjoying a cup of tea afterwards. They were having a normal conversation, just the kind where you get to know someone. There was no chance or the time for him to share anything about Jesus. You can say, my friend, all he was trying to do is to connect with the guy and try and serve him. He had no clue if his action will have any impact at all. And this is what we see Luke doing in Acts chapter 1. Verse 1, in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach. Sometimes... I think we're used to reading books in the Bible and we forget why the writer wrote them. We forget when we read the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts <coughs> that it was intended as a letter to one person. God laid on Luke's heart to write a book, or according to other translations, an account to this person called Theophilus, so that 
Theophilus will be sure about the things that he was taught. You see, Luke wasn't waiting for the church programs or the actions of the professionals to define for him how to engage with people. No, Luke used a simple personal act, the personal act of writing a letter. Yes, it was a lengthy letter, but a letter nevertheless to reach one person, to connect with one person, to impact one person. We know from the book of Acts that Luke spent a long time traveling with Paul during his missionary journeys. But we don't see him trying, standing behind Paul, thinking only the great evangelists are the people who can impact the people. No, he was trying to do his bit to connect with people, even if it was one person, to make a difference in their lives. Do we feel that that is us this morning? Or are we more imprisoned within frustrations and we blame our pastors and church programs for the lack of evangelism, for the lack of engagement with the community around us, with the people around us? Friends, all it takes is a personal act, one person trying to connect with another person. This is the first thing we learn from Luke. And the second thing we learn is that small actions matter. So we already mentioned Luke's intention in writing the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts was to reach one person. And you know what? He did not dream, not in his wildest dream, would he have thought that those two letters will come to constitute 27.5% of the New Testament. Did you know that Luke wrote more of the New Testament than anyone else, more than Paul? He did not dream that millions of people will come to read, read what he wrote, the letter he wrote to one person over many centuries. You see, Luke, he wasn't waiting for the big hit before he started acting. No, God laid on his heart a small task, writing a letter, and he went ahead and did it. Sometimes we need to act in small ways and trust God that he will take our actions, do something with them, even when we don't see the results. My Romanian friend, He did not think much will come from his interaction with that elderly gentleman. And he went back home to Romania, never giving it a second thought. What he did not know is as a result of that small interaction, the neighbor became more friendly toward his in-laws. And after two years, when his his wife passed away, he ended up leaning on the in-laws and after months of conversation, he came to a place where he ended up leaning on the Lord for himself. We need need to engage people on a personal level, try to connect with them, even if it was through small acts, trusting that God, that Jesus will use every single interaction. (coughs) And the third thing we're gonna learn from Luke is that everyone can make a difference. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 14, Paul described Luke as the beloved physicians. You see, Luke wasn't one of the professionals. He wasn't one of the apostles, but that did not stop him from doing his bit. In contrast, I think today we may feel that we are not good enough to engage, to do things ourselves because we are not the pastors or the professional evangelist (coughs) who is paid to do the job. We may feel that we like the wisdom or the knowledge to be able to engage with people directly and answer their questions. In Luke chapter 1 verse 3, we hear Luke saying the following, 
since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning. You see, Luke spent time, even before intending to write to Theophilus, asking questions, talking to people, learning, wanting to know more so he will get to know Jesus better. And then he used that knowledge that he gained through his life to influence someone, to influence one person in this case. Many of us have been in church for many years. Many of us already built a picture of who Jesus is and what he came <clears throat> to do. We certainly don't have all the answers. And you know what? Nobody does. <clears throat> the pastor who stands here thinking he can tell you everything about every single per verse, they don't. The theology professor who thinks they can argue about any theological topic and they never think they're wrong, they don't have all the knowledge. No, we can use whatever knowledge God has given us, or whatever skills God has given us, even small skills like cutting the lawn, making someone who's lonely a cup of tea and having a chat with them, inviting someone over for dinner, anything like Luke, no matter what it is, no matter what kind of non-church background we have, to be able to, in, to connect with people through small words and small acts, regardless of who we are, we can try and impact people's lives. And the fourth thing we're gonna see is we need to be open and vulnerable. <coughs> a week after starting a new job, I was traveling with my manager to visit a warehouse in Birmingham. We just got into a conversation where I started comparing the traffic on the M1 to the traffic I saw around Dam Damascus growing up. He started asking questions. If I had a family back in Damascus, I said yes. If I knew anyone before coming to the UK, I answered no. And then he asked about what brought me to the UK. Now, I knew the guy for less than a week. He was my manager. Certainly he can make my life miserable at work if he didn't like any of the God stuff. I had a choice, either to shy away or be open, vulnerable, and share with him. So we spent the next hour in the car where I shared with him how I came to become a Christian and how the Lord carried me through my journey as I came to the UK to seek an asylum. The poor guy, he was driving, we were on the M1. Unless he jumped out of the car and rolled down the M1, he had no choice but to listen. Mm. <laughs> you see, Luke did not only include the result of his research in his letter. No, he describes real-time events that he experienced <clears throat> while traveling with Paul in Acts. He uses the pronoun we when he recounts his travels with Paul and his companions in Acts chapter 16, 20, 21, 27, 28, many stories that he experienced in real life. He just shares it with Theophilus. Sometimes all it takes is to talk about our lives, about what we've been through, about what God carried us through, and if there is an opportunity to share about his faithfulness and goodness towards us. A friend of mine, he went through a really broken experience and he ended up feeling lost, wondering how could he testify about God being good to his colleagues because they saw what he's been through. After a couple of months of having those thoughts, one of his colleagues ended up going through a really rough time and knowing what he went through, knowing what my friend went through, opened the place for them to sit down, have a conversation and share experiences. And he ended up talking to him about how God carried him through his tough experience. The good and the bad. Successes and failures, joys and sorrows, 
God gives us all of those experiences and they help us to relate in a real way to real people who are going through life just like us. All we need to do is to be open, to make ourselves vulnerable in front, vulnerable in front of them about our own journeys. We need to be all about people in whatever way possible, all of us sharing our lives. And the fifth and final thing, we need to do it all while trusting God to act. Look with me at verses 1 and 2 in chapter 1 again. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles, he had chosen. All that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. Not everything done by Jesus in the past. Jesus started the work of the kingdom of God while he was here on earth in his physical body, but the work did not stop when he became absent from this earth in his physical body. No, his work continues through the people he has chosen, by the work of his Holy Spirit. You can say the Gospel of Luke describes the works of Jesus while he was here on earth, while the book of Acts describes the works of Jesus from his heavenly throne. Instead of calling the book the Acts of the Apostles, the book should be called the Acts of the Risen king and you know what you will have the privilege of seeing over the coming weeks as you look at the book of acts how jesus works through his people mm -hmm. in his people and through them to impact the lives of everyone around them you're going to have the privilege of seeing how the people of god responded in trust in jesus instructions mm -hmm. how they carried out the, his mission and how they did their bit. And the exciting part, they weren't working on their own. Jesus was working with them by his Holy Spirit, and they completely dependent, dependent on him. Isn't this exciting news for us this morning? Jesus is not done working. And he works when we try to connect with people around us in whatever way, no matter how the small the action or the word that we share is. He works regardless of what jobs we have. Pastor, painter, housewife, retired, it is all his work. The real professional, the one who is more professional at this work than anyone else, is working through our action. And all we need to do is trust him. That's it. Like Luke did, like the apostles did, and like the people around them did, as you will hear about as you go through the book of Acts. I don't know if I'm brave or foolish trying to talk about John Bunyan in Bedford, but let's give it a go. <laughs> so John Bunyan, he describes in The Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners the agonies he experienced before becoming a Christian. He says the following, A whole flood of blasphemies, both against God, Christ, and the scriptures were poured upon my soul, my great confusion and astonishment. My heart was as a, t as a time exceedingly hard. If I would be, have been given a thousand pound for a tear, I could not shed one. I feared that this wicked sin of mine might be the sin and pardonable. He was in a place where he had no peace and no assurance. 
And then comes what seems to be a decisive moment in his journey when, by a total accident, he hears a conversation between a group of few poor women who was basically just minding their business. One day, as I was passing into the field, this sentence fell upon my soul. Thy righteousness is in heaven. And I saw with the eyes of my soul Jesus Christ at God's right hand. There, I say, was my righteousness, so that whatever I was, or whatever I was doing, God could not say of me, he lacks my righteousness for that was just before him. I also saw, moreover, that it was not my good frame of heart that made my righteousness better, nor my bad frame that made my righteousness worse. For my righteousness was Jesus Christ himself, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now did my chains fall off my legs indeed, I was loosed from my afflictions and irons. My temptation also fled away, so that from that time those dreadful scriptures of God about the unforgivable sin left off to trouble me. Now went I also home rejoicing for the grace and the love of God. The butterfly effect. A small act producing unimaginable results. A small conversation between few poor women transformed a passerby to be one of the most influential Christian writers and Puritan preachers. One of the women, she had no clue that simply her sharing with, with other women around her that Christ is her righteousness, is her all in all, will have such an impact, will cause any of this. And you know what? While the butterfly effect might be a bit overstated when it comes to the world of science, I would love to meet a butterfly that can cause a hurricane somewhere. <laughs> it's not overstated when it comes to the work of God. Isn't that what we see God doing in the Bible over and over and over again? How many people did the Lord tell Gideon to keep when he was facing an army of 135,000 strong? A mere 300. Who was it that faced the giant Goliath, the professional warrior who nobody was able to defeat. A mere shepherd boy who never carried a sword. Who was it that was sent to free the Israelites from the rule of one of the most powerful men on earth at the time? A fugitive who was running away for his life from that same man. What was it? that God used to bring us life, an instrument of death and a symbol of shame. Who was the person who had more impact on history than anyone else who ever lived? A carpenter from the back streets of Israel who was not successful by the world standards. We believe in a God who can take small, insignificant, personal acts performed by non-professionals such as ourselves. Non-professionals who can do nothing but trust him and depend on him. He takes our acts and our words and produces the most unbelievable results, even where we're not aware of them. <laughs> Instead of shying away, thinking we are weak, we get to rejoice with Paul when he says, I will boast 
all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of God may rest in me. To show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. He is working. He's working in every one of us by his Holy Spirit. Through every one of us by his Holy Spirit. And the question for us this morning, are we going to trust him, depend on him, and simply do our bit? <clears throat> Why don't we take a few moments of quiet as the band joins us before we stand and sing together. Every day, we can make every word and every action into a song when we're singing. Yet not I, but through mm. Christ in me. Please join me as we stand and start singing that now. <laughs>
Isn't it wonderful knowing that whatever we do, whatever we say, God is behind every word and every action. And that all we need to do is trust him and do our bit. Why don't we finish our time together with a word of prayer? Precious Heavenly Father, we want to praise you for the words that we just <clears throat> sang. You've given us Jesus, your Son, and now there is nothing more for heaven to give for us. You've given us everything, and you ask us to give you everything. <clears throat> you show us love that is beyond measure, and all you ask is we would love you in response. We pray that you will stir our hearts so the acts that saved us, the act that brought us to be in this place where we can sing about your grace will motivate us in the way we live our lives. Help us to be thankful that every step is walked with you, that we're not left on our own to rummage through our wisdom and knowledge which might be limited to depend on our strength that runs away. But no, you work by your spirit in us and through us so that whatever poor knowledge we have, you make it into a life-saving medicine for someone. Yeah. Whatever little action we can perform can become something that testify about your goodness to someone. Please help us to always fix our eyes on heaven, on the one who is working in us from his heavenly throne. Help us to forget about the results and help us to live for your glory. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.